This is Twit. Philip, you're like me, an old time Apple fan. And uh, in the early days, I embraced Apple because it was the computer for the rest of us. It was almost hippie. It was, I mean, Steve Jobs was a hippie. It was yeah. counterculture. It was those guys in the suits, back to the 1984 commercial, those guys in the suits use IBM, were the creatives, were the, we think different, we're the lucky one, you know, the, the crazy the ones. Crazy ones. We're, this is despicable from that point of view. I find this horrible. This is Apple as the 1%. What aspect of it is, is despicable? Um, well, f what's been happening to me over the last few years, Apple, okay, this is the most negative description. You can all shoot me down. What has happened to me as somebody who loved Apple as the crazy ones, Apple has seen a plateau in its sales and more importantly, I think, a plateau in its ability to innovate. They haven't been able to find that secret sauce uh, since the iPad, maybe the Apple Watch, certainly not. People say the AirPods. Come on, really? That's the the best you can come up with. So there's the, the, this kind of plateauing of innovation, and what happens when a company gets to that point is sales plateau as well, because there's no reason to buy the new thing if it's no better than the old thing. And we've seen this in other industries. The car industry is a good example. They really weren't able to improve on cars much after the '50s. So they added fins. They added chrome. It became a fashion industry. And to me, everybody's talking about this is a pivot of Apple from being a hardware company to a services company. This is continuing the pivot Apple's been making ever since the Apple Watch from a counterculture creative company to a fashion uh, company. They're all about fashion. And why fashion? Because fashion, you got to buy a new one every season. Doesn't matter that the hemlines are, you know, better. They're not better. They're just different. That's why you have to buy a new outfit. And I think that's unfortunately what's happened to Apple. And I, I, I for one, am disappointed. And I think if you look at the Macintosh, if, if you look at the stuff that Apple's put out lately, it has been a grave disappointment. Now, our behavior uh, has been trained. Go ahead. Uh, I'll let, I'll let uh, you go, uh, Dan, and then, and then Philip. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, Philip. Uh, uh, we have been trained to expect innovation on a pretty unreasonable schedule, meaning like every 6, 12, and 18 months. Uh, and what Apple did is is capitalize in the last decade, decade and a half, capitalize on uh, the emergence and growth of gadgets in a technology ecosystem that was fairly sustainable. We could grow from uh, – uh, the miniaturization of things like the iPod into uh, 3G and then 4G because those were fairly fast iterations in the technology that supported uh, the miniaturization of devices. But the next real innovations are going to be uh, the Internet of Things, data, and maybe powered by 5G, although these things are all coming a lot slower than how we've been trained to expect uh, the the tech innovation cycle to flow. So it, it's just going to take a lot longer for things like 5G to power IoT. And IoT is just not as understandable by a consumer audience as something like a, a mini pocketable supercomputer. So yes, it's an industry-wide problem, but Apple will not be on the forefront of 5G. No. Nope. Go ahead, Philip. Well, you raised a lot of points. So let's see if we can separate them. Um, in terms of fashion, uh, you know, hiring the head of Burberry's is uh, 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 plays right into your your argument. Yeah, but she's gone but, now. Uh, <laughs> Oddly yeah. enough, maybe there wasn't enough fashion for Angela I, Arons. I, I see that strategy as looking at their install base, which is huge and and which is rich. Billion phones, uh, y'all. Yeah, and and, uh, and marketing to it, you know, they they know who their customers are. They know what kind of disposable income they have. A lot of the customers can afford to buy a new color watch band whenever they change their suit. And you know, there's money to be made. They're not leaving it on the table. Uh, it's it's certainly not Steve Jobs in an ashram, but it, it's, yeah. it's understandable what they're doing. The other thing, though, about innovation is I tend to think of Apple 
kind of like the Pixar of technology. Uh, they make hits. Uh, they they do screw up from time to time, whereas Pixar doesn't. But they, you know, they've got this system for re for iterating, and and they've got they you know they've got really good access to the next technology that's coming. Uh, they they hire some pretty smart engineers. So I'm assuming that what we have right now is sort of the interregnum uh, between the watch and the uh, and the AirPods, which uh, I disagree about the AirPods. I think the AirPods are, are a magnificent uh, piece of technology that nobody else can equal right now uh, because Apple can miniaturize better than a lot of their competitors. But that that Apple, I assume, is working on other stuff. And we hear rumors and of, of things about, you know, uh, glasses with, with things printed on them on the inside and cars way, way down if that ever happens. Uh, you're assuming that Apple is, is going to fail at those things. I'm assuming, based on their track record, that they'll probably deliver something – either they'll deliver something that's – Pretty, pretty compelling, or they'll drop it like the uh, air power. You know, if if it ain't good, they're not going to make it. Anyway, that's that's my take on what you're saying there. You still hold yeah. ho have hope for the future, Leo. Well, I, I, what you're saying makes a lot of sense, though. That what a, what else is a company going to do when it's gotten as big as it can possibly get? It has to figure out a way to keep having people. True you know, participate in sure. it. And if Apple were, you know, like it was in the eighties and it never grew, then it would have been just this great little niche thing for right. creatives and hippies. And it didn't though, it grew. So now it is trying to find another way. And I, I think what you're saying about it being sort of aligned more with fashion makes a lot of sense. And is certainly a, a great, a great way for Apple to market the fu their future is to get people interested in needing a reason to upgrade every single year. And just like a new pair of pants, you, your current pair of pants are fine, but you want to upgrade because it's the new right. trend. So yeah, it's it. that's actually a great analogy and makes a lot of sense. And and honestly, that's good business. I'm not saying it's bad business, but it, for some, I wish Apple were selling the steak still and not the sizzle. Right, but if you if you were to see, with that kind of like you know in hindsight, I wish Apple you wouldn't have the job you have right now if Apple were only <laughs> selling selling the steak, right? It would have been too small of a company. It couldn't have grown big enough to become something that the rest of us can actually sustain a career based off of. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't base my career on Apple, thank God. <laughs> well, you know, like technology, <laughs> technology I, in general. I don't get invitations to Apple. <laughs> events. Um, Why yeah, is that, and I Leo? Can't, why? Who knows? No one knows. I never asked Apple, and I don't care to know. It's fine because we cover it here. Uh, Apple lately has started to get uh, a little, and I don't know if it's Apple to blame or the general trend in tech and Google's YouTube adhering to it, but we keep getting taken down. Uh, we don't. We no longer. The last time Apple did a live event, we streamed it on YouTube live as we always did with commentary, fair use, and it was taken down and. In fact, not just taken down, but our whole YouTube live channel was down for a month. So we uh, no longer can stream Apple events on YouTube. Uh, we put portions of the Apple event in our show iOS Today and Mac Break Weekly. Those were taken down. We appealed and they got put back up pretty quickly because it is legal fair use. It's a news show commenting on an Apple event. Uh, but I think App I, it's possible Apple has upped its campaign against us. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't care. We're going to cover the story <laughs> regardless. Uh, and I'm not mad at Apple. I still buy Apple stuff. It's not that I'm mad at them. I'm disappointed, if anything. Uh, and and maybe you're right, Philip. Maybe that innovation is out in the distance and there's nothing to be had right now. Certainly Apple's not, a lot, not, a, not alone. Silicon Valley is in this doldrums right now.